Here's uh, Dilworth's theorem, done in 1950. I actually uh, met Dilworth. Uh, it was pretty late in his career, and I was still pretty young. This theorem appears in a paper published in 1950. The theorem has a one-page proof, and then the pa paper goes on for uh, 15, 20 pages and proves many other things, much, much harder. History, as I've, I think I already mentioned this to you, has long ago forgotten the content of this paper, but they remember this theorem. And that bothered Dilworth until his dying days that history remembered what he thought was a minor result in the paper and had forgotten completely the major work that he had done. But that's the way it goes. So his theorem is that a poset of width w can be partitioned into w chains. Now, unlike the preceding dual result, this one is going to be much harder. This is a real theorem. The other one is just kind of an observation. All right, let me make these comments about the proofs of Dilworth's theorem. Dilworth's paper was published in 1950, and in 1954, a famous combinatorial optimizer named Ray Fulkerson published a short paper but showing how to use algorithms from what are called bipartite matching, and we will, we will talk about this later in this course. But Fulkerson showed how to effectively, efficiently find the width and a maximum, a maximum anti-chain and a minimum cardinality chain partition at the same time. And actually, we're going to do this proof right at the end of this course. But it requires a lot more development, so I just want you to, to hear that one can do this now. A famous Hungarian named Galai, working with an English guy, Milgram, uh, published a paper in 1960, 10 years after Dilworth, in which they proved a, a much stronger result using path decompositions in oriented graphs. And then uh, an Israeli, Misha Perlas, published in 1963, a very simple induction. And I comment at the bottom, this is the proof found in most combinatorics textbooks. It is also the proof that I'm about to show you. So look at the dates on these, 1954, 1960, 1963, uh, and remember that Dilworth's theorem was published in 1950. These proofs can't be really hard because Dilworth's own proof was only one page. Question? Why did people proofs? That's a good question. So his question was, why do people do additional proofs? Well, uh, sometimes a new proof is interesting because it's better faster, it uses a cleaner line through to it. Uh, every now and then you put a new proof which is actually correcting one which was uh, not quite right the first time. But typically most research journals won't publish a second proof. That just because you do it slightly different or slightly better uh, you tuck that into some other work, but uh, in general, research journals will not publish second proofs. These were exceptions because they actually proved something much more, especially the middle one. The Galai Milgram uh, path decomposition proves much more. The first one, uh, Fulkerson, actually proves much more because he's, he's actually explaining how to do it, whereas Dilworth's theorem, as you'll see in a moment, the proof I'm going to show you, has no algorithm at all. It's kind of like uh, when you were studying differential equations and you proved that there was a solution 
there exists a solution, but you didn't learn how to get your hands on it. Knowing, knowing that it's out there and, and feeling it and seeing it in your hands are not, are not the same thing. 